。如果学汉字的话，看起汉字，繁体字跟简体字应该学哪一种？ Which type of Chinese characters, Hanzi or in Japanese we call them Kanji, Korean Hanja. What type of characters should you learn? Anybody who started learning, especially Chinese, would know that there are simplified characters versus the traditional characters, which are not simplified.、Uh, it speaks for itself. So for those who aren't familiar with it, just at a high level. In mainland China, there was a process that went through simplification of characters, and there were a bunch of reasons for this. But to this day, there are two sets used, and there are different reasons why these different places use the different sets. So, for example, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, and even with the older Chinese populations in places like Thailand and Indonesia. The Chinese populations in these places use the old style, the traditional characters, whereas mainland China, Singapore, Malaysia will use the simplified characters, which we call Jian Ti Zi. So for today's clip, I'm going to approach this from five different angles, and for the first two angles, they both have to do with efficiency. So the first one is going to be the efficiency of actually writing. The second one is going to be the efficiency of learning. Then the third point, I'm going to speak about it from an aesthetic value. The fourth point could be the most important one. It's going to be looking at the politics because no matter what type of Chinese character you choose to learn, or you choose to write, or heck, even if you're sending a message to somebody, which keyboard you use and whether it goes out in simplified or traditional, for some people it's sending a political message. And finally, value. That's bang for the buck. What gives you the most value? Should you invest your time in learning the traditional or the simplified? So for those who want to skip to the end and just get an answer, should you learn traditional or simplified characters? My answer is yes. But do watch to the end because I'm going to take you on a journey, and perhaps by the end of this, you're going to see this through a new lens. So to start with, let me just write my Chinese name, and I'm going to do it in the traditional and then the simplified. So that's the traditional. I tried my best to sort of write it a little slowly, but when I actually write it faster, it's written a little differently. And now I'm going to write it in the simplified. So apologies for the squiggliness of it.、Um, using this tablet is a bit weird, and the video drivers are getting、uh, pushed to the max at the moment. But here you can see it. So my Chinese name is Wang Huai Le. Okay, so there's an interesting meaning to my name too, Wang. My surname in English, Raj. Raja means king, and so Wang Guo Wang the Wang. You can see the three strokes. So that's the heaven, the sky, and the earth. The person who has power over all of those is the king, and so that's Wang, my Chinese surname. The next one, Huai. Huai literally means to have deep thought on something, or and thought because your mind is in here. So deep thought or thinking on something in Japanese, this same character actually means the chest. As well, and then the third character, Lua. Actually, in Mandarin, there are two pronunciations to this character, Lua, which means happiness, or Yue, which means music. And you can see it looks like a guy shaking maracas there. And in Japanese, there's also these two meanings for it. So depending how you're reading it, it could mean happy or music. But when you think of it, you're sitting there shaking your maracas, playing music. It's happy. So anyway, my name is Wang Huai Le. It could mean Wang, and then somebody thinking deeply about happiness, or who is happy, or it could be somebody who is thinking deeply and also playing music or about music.、Uh, anyway, that's my name, Wang Huai Le. Now you notice that when I wrote it. Um, the second one was much more efficient, and so let's just speak about efficiency in writing. Many of the forms of the simplified characters have come from the cursive script, the Chao Shu forms of normal full form characters, and so you can see some of them in there. I'll show you some more later on. So when you're actually writing this, well, let's see how fast I can write both of them. This is the、um, full traditional script. Okay, so that's how fast I write Wang. The second one, I'll do it like that, and then Le, I'll go like that, and that's the full form of it. Now let's see how fast I can write the simplified. 
that's the first character very pretty easy that's the second character that was actually pretty fast and that's a third character so there is a definite saving of time you economize time in writing the fast forms and this is because they're based many of the patterns are based on the cursive forms of the characters some of them like you see this one here where you get this huge character so that is there you've got a stroke on a roof you've got an eye you're coming down you've got this that's striking to the eye and, and this is coming down right so that whole thing is abbreviated into this character which most chinese would this is the character pu, meaning not but it's just used as a substitute because when you're writing this fast it's almost like you're having some similar like this pattern of strokes here which is also the kind of pattern you do when you're doing that which kind of looks similar to that um which is this bull character so you can see the transition this is the thought process and then you'd have to have this kind of native Chinese realization in your muscles of what shapes get changed to what. So I can see actually why this has become this because that's kind of the similar flow of your muscles when you're doing that bottom component. There's another character that uses that and it's the word um, like in Hai Shi still. So we have this character here. So it's taken um, with this and so that meaning still yet um, that's turned also into this one here so that same bull character is used for that so as far as economizing time is concerned it really does you will write probably faster you will spend less time writing your strokes in doing these characters and for native speakers of Chinese that's important because you don't you're not getting into the etymology and all of these things when you're writing you just want to have your meaning put down on paper so I get that but then the question of does it economize learning does your learning of Chinese benefit from it I want to put this question to you could you imagine if somebody coming to learn English only learnt this form of the letter s and so for example if my name's Stuart the only way they learned to write my name was like this. Okay, and then what happens when you see this letter here? Now, this letter actually came to that, came to that, came to that. So you can see that this letter here originally came from this shape. But if people only saw this letter here and only ever learnt it, I suspect many people wouldn't put two and two together and know that it's come from that. Now, exposure to old text and this, you would see this perhaps in text and think, okay, I know that's that, but I write it like this. But in Chinese, it's put to a whole other level. And so for me personally, I started out learning the fan tzu, the traditional characters. And there are a few reasons for that. My grandfather learned the traditional characters. I remember books that he had. Now, most of his books that he learned Chinese from were from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and actually many of the current traditional forms weren't settled. And so in these books, even though they were from mainland China, and many of his books actually had simplified characters in, the full simplified set that we use today weren't actually complete back then. And so many characters that are simplified today were still the traditional forms back then. They didn't have those simplified ones yet. So when I was a kid, I was actually learning mainly traditional forms of the characters. And also because of my grandfather, he actually spoke Japanese as well. And he had all of these flashcards in traditional forms of the kanji. And so I learned the Japanese forms of the characters as well when I was a kid. Um, when we were playing back and forth and using flashcards and all of these things. And so I had a really good grounding in the traditional forms of Chinese characters. And so I want to show you why I personally can appreciate the traditional forms. And I really believe in learning. Yeah, sure. When you're writing, you might economize on time. But for me, learning the traditional forms gives me some deep insights that I can take to help peg those meanings into me deep down inside that I'm never going to forget. And also it helps me when I see a new character that I haven't seen before to have a good guesstimate uh, summarizing the words of TK and from his cracking Chinese puzzles. But you can really have a good guess at maybe what the meaning is. You get what the meaning is because all of the strokes within that traditional character tell a story. So I'll give you a few examples. First of all, just look at the character for country. Okay, so here's the traditional character, guo, meaning country. So you have 
So this is like defending the mouths with a weapon. This is a mouth, this is a weapon, you're defending it and the boundaries. So the perimeter, which means Guo country. Okay, now the simplified character for Guo is this. You have this character, which means Jade. Uh, it's the king, the treasure he has in his pocket is Jade. And that also means value, something of value. And so you've gone from this defense or sort of you see this character and you think of war, of fighting um, for the land, uh, which is your country. Here you have the land that is precious. And so um, they've substituted this out because then when you write it fast, you actually write it like that. It's, it's much faster than writing maybe this. Well, I don't know. Um, you can write either in Taiwan, Hong Kong, they would use this. In the mainland, Singapore, Malaysia, they would use this one. But you get an economizing of strokes in this. But when I see this, there's just so much of a deep story to it. That story sticks and helps me remember the character. Let's look at another one. Now, this is the word for book in Japanese to write as well. So I've got a hand. All right, and that hand is holding a pen going down onto the paper. You can almost see this three-dimensional piece of paper to write something on the table. This is the word shu, meaning book. And so the fast way to write this actually in the Taoshu form, you put your stroke for it first, and then you would do something like that and that, which could turn into really fast like that. And this is what actually became the simplified form. So you have your stroke down, you've got that. And so this has become the simplified form for book in modern Chinese from the mainland. So this is Shu, this is Shu. So you can see, however, it's actually come from the cursive form of this. No matter how you cut it, writing this is going to take more time than writing that. I get it. And so this is more economic, but this, just knowing this really etches a story. Um, and then you can start to get the other meanings. So you've got this one here. It's um, Hua, which is to actually paint or draw. So you've got writing and drawing. And any other character that you see with this thing, with the three fingers representing the hand and the pen in, you know it's got to do with something with writing and that. But if you just saw this, Nah, you wouldn't know actually, when you, you, you know, you just saw that you wouldn't know that um, it's related to that off the bat. And this has to do with writing. And so the argument that I would say is one good thing for learning the traditional characters is that as a learning tool, it really burns these memories in, it burns the meanings into your soul and it helps learn other characters. Another one, let's have a look at this, the character for love. And so you have a claw reaching through the boundaries of the heart to take hold of the mind. Okay, this is I. Now in modern Chinese, the character for love is simplified. You've still got the claw going through the boundaries, but here you don't have the heart. You've got this character, um, yo, which means friendship. So it kind of has the same meaning of this. And I can see that they've taken that, um, the fast form of this, then thinking, well, why don't we just do friendship? Because friendship, love, it's kind of the same meaning. And so the fast way to write that then would be that, which kind of looks like the fast way to write that. They look almost the same. So you can see they've economized on a few strokes. The heart character, Shin, here has been economized up to just one stroke. And they've said, well, let's use the your character, friendly, love, and people will get that same kind of inner meaning but I really like the deep meaning. There are other characters that are just pure economizing on strokes. So for example, this word for a shell, right? Uh, which means money, because you used to count shells, clams. Anyone watch the Flintstones, how many clams you got? That's their currency. This means shell. And this character here, so we learnt that actually this was used in one of the other ones, meaning an eye. So anytime you see it, horizontal or vertical form, that means an eye. And so an eye on feet to move, that is jian, to see. And this one here is bei, which means a shell or has to do with money. So anytime you see this component next to a character, it's probably got something to do with commerce or money. Anytime you see this, it has to do with vision or seeing something. So this is the long form. So if I were writing these fast, I have that, I have that. And so that's this one. And then 
the jian. I have that and that comes down. And you can see that, oh, when I'm going even faster, it turns into that bang. And that indeed is the simplified form. The simplified form for B is you go down and you've got this inside. And for jian, you go down and you've got this. Actually, it's probably more like that inside. Okay, so you can see that this is a pure economizing on strokes, which comes directly from the cursive form. And so you see this, you kind of know it's come from this. And even people who write these, uh, when they write them fast, they'll look similar to that. So this, I don't mind so much. However, I still do appreciate this because even for this one with this eye and this eye, you know that this base character, this is like a, a core primitive character for a meaning. Just seeing the eyeball there in the eye, it actually deep down gives you this semantic realization of what it is. And you could miss that in using this form. So knowing both the traditional and the um, simplified form will really help you. The simplified form actually helps you understand how these cursive forms have transitioned. But knowing the traditional form really etches the story in. So I'll just do a couple of more just to sort of let you make the choice which you would prefer. I love this character. This is the character for dragon. Okay. And you can see it there standing there on the flesh. And this thing almost looks like a beast, like a snake kind of thing. Rah, you can see the dragon in there. Now, when you write this fast, it ends up looking like this. And then that comes up and you have this up there. So that's that dot up there. This is dragon in fast cursive form. Uh, I'll do it again. So you bang down and up and you got that there. So what's happened in the simplified form, they've just basically taken a piece of that. And so dragon in modified form, simplified form is that. And that is probably much easier. That is actually this component. So that's come up down and then bang. And so they've said, look, let's just call this dragon. We don't have to do any of this stuff. We're just going to take it from there. And so that is basically then where this form of dragon came from. I actually wrote it around the wrong way here. This is dragon. You can see that is this portion of it here. And so some people might say, why on earth would you spend time writing all of these strokes when you can do this? Yeah, but I love just the look of this. It, it says dragon in it. Um, but I get it. You're writing, you want to economize your strokes and time. And so there's a good argument for both of them. Maybe the last one I'll use, I can actually use the characters for simplified and traditional. And so if I write uh, the word for traditional characters, so this word here is um, so this is, you can see them both here. So that's fun. But the word for T, which means body, let's have a look at how it's written. You have in the traditional, this is a bone. Okay. The flesh that gets calcified. This is the word for bone. Cool. And then you have this character here lying down there. And this bit here, um, to, like in tofu, tofu. And this actually is lying down on, uh, what's it, an altar. But you can sort of see this symbolizes something to do with the body, with flesh, with bones. And so this here, T means body. Now this is simplified to this for the simplified characters. That's a huge simplification. Now, the way they've done this, rather than using bone, they're thinking, well, a body, it's not of dead people, it's of alive. So they've used this character here. So when you write it fast, it actually comes out like this. This is Ren Zipang. That means person. So something to do with a person or a human. And then this character here um, is used as the component there to substitute for all of this, which becomes T. Okay, that that literally means bun the origin. So the origins of a person maybe is the body, but that substitutes this out here. So let's see what's faster to write. If I write this here, and you can see it's taking time, yeah, versus this, um, that was much faster to write. And so you can see that this definitely in writing it like this 
does economize time and it does have this deeper meaning. However, this form with the bone and all these components are used in other characters. So knowing this traditional form is going to give you leverage when you see other characters that might use the bone or this component or this component or this entire component here, you're going to see other characters that may not have been simplified to this, that knowing the traditional character is going to give you insider knowledge to have a good guess at what these characters you haven't met yet are going to mean. So having this traditional character knowledge is definitely beneficial. So the last one that I wanna use just in my examples is the character for actually the word simplified. So you've got bamboo here on top. Bamboo means anything to do with maybe writing or something constructed, made by hand, um, pens. So you've got this bamboo on top showing that whatever is coming below is probably going to be the sound component. This is the meaning component. And so we have gates here also. So gates, this is mun. You can see they look like these saloon gates that are opening. And we have this word here. Um, so this means is the sound component. This is jian like in shi jian, but jian with a third tone with these on top, which means simplified, simplified. And this is pronounced jian. So simplified characters, jian ti zi. When you write this fast, first of all, this top component, okay, is written probably like that. But these gates here, now you can see that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strokes just to do that. When you write it fast, it's normally written like this. You go there, comes up and around and down and up. And then that middle part when written fast would be there, one, two, like that. So if I were doing it fast, there comes down. Okay, so it doesn't take too long. And so that's actually what became the character for simplified characters, rather than coming up like this, which you would normally do when you're writing it cursively anyway, you write it like this. You go there, there, and around. And so all the characters that have this in, for example, like in the word for news, Xinwen, you have that there, um, and you have an ear in there. Okay, so that would have been originally from that, which was actually, this you've got that there and you've got the ear inside of it and so again this is actually a much faster way of writing that well yes when you're writing it these simplified characters are definitely faster i really think that if you want a full rich chinese experience you're going to want to learn both the fan ti zi and the jian ti zi. Now, I personally would say learn how to write and get in your muscles, all of them. But at the very least, learn the primitive shapes, learn your radicals and these basic character components like this. Like when you've got the bone um, in the ti and you've got this component up here and you've got the that there. You need to know at least what these components look like and what characters they're in because you're going to see them in non-simplified characters in the future. And if you only learn via the simplified forms in your Learn Chinese book that may have come out of the mainland or from Singapore, you're really going to miss out. So one other character that you see, look, this is the character for Taiwan in the full form. Look at that, how many strokes. And then one, you've got three strokes here. You've got silk coming down, you're coming this component here. And then you've got this thing, which means sort of a bow or arc thing. And one that means a harbor, so Taiwan. That is a lot of strokes, as opposed to the simplified form. Have a look at that. That just means a platform, so Tai. And then this one, now actually in cursive form, these three drops of water here, like the real water character comes from this, which turns into this if you're writing it um, in faster form, which can become this. But then you also have three strokes of water that's called Sandian Shui. And so that in cursive form would turn to that, but in simplified, they'll still use the three strokes. But for this bit here, you'll actually see that simplified down to this. That kind of makes more sense to do it like that than to write this whole thing up there. However, in seeing this, you see this in so many different characters as well. Um, and so you can take your choice 
but I personally like this form, maybe because that's what I grew up writing, um, the full forms of them. I just feel that the meanings have had a lobotomy. It's like looking at a McDonald's version of a hamburger rather than an old school hamburger. Um, I don't know. Um, but even in Taiwan, you will see the word Taiwan often written like this as well. Sometimes they don't even use the full form for that character. It really depends. But then this takes me to the last two points, aesthetics and politics, and then value. So that's three points. First of all, on an aesthetic level, I just love the aesthetics of the old characters. If you could, say when you're typing, you see the full form of the character. For me, it does something for me. I just see this meaning and I see the how rich the depth in every single character, how many strokes are there, the aesthetics of them, the strokes, the balance, it really does something for me. So I particularly like the aesthetics of the full form characters, even when they're written in Xing Shu, the semi cursive or the Chao Shu. If you want to see that, look at the other two clips that I've done also on uh, Chinese cursive writing and how to convert your learner, maybe foreigner writing into an adult style of Chinese writing. But then also, the political level. Ever since simplified characters for Chinese have been brought in, say from the, the 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, right up until now, there's an association with the CCP and the Communist Party of China and the PRC. And so many people, whether it were um, the Taiwanese people or the people of Hong Kong, have actively chosen the traditional characters as a political statement and a stand against the mainland and against the CCP. And so um, even more so, the, actually the introduction of uh, simplified ch Chinese characters was introduced by the Kuomintang before everything happened and um, Chiang Kai-shek moved across to um, Taiwan and all of this happened. Um, there was originally a move to simplify the characters, but then there was this association with the CCP. And so for a lot of people, simplified characters means communism or the CCP, mainland China, and traditional characters means taking a stand against um, the CCP or communism and retaining the culture and possibly maybe not having it gobbled up by this juggernaut that they saw as the CCP, communism and mainland China. So while we see some uh, countries like Singapore, Malaysia, maybe they thought it was in their interest to sort of tip the hat to mainland China and say, OK, we'll do these simplified characters where the older school Singaporeans would have written in the traditional characters, like you see the old school Chinese people in Thailand still use the traditional characters. Singapore, Malaysian have moved towards the simplified form, but in Hong Kong, Taiwan, they're still very proud and they keep the traditional characters. So that's one thing. The other thing is value. And as I have hinted all throughout this clip, you really get value for money in knowing at least the traditional forms. There's a saying for when you see a new character that you don't actually know. 左边, 右边, 里边, 中间, I think I said that right. Maybe it's the other way around. But basically it's saying look to the left or look to the right for the meaning component or you look in the center um, for the meaning component of that character and you'll get the meaning and probably have a good guess of the pronunciation. Well, when you know the full forms of the characters, it gives you much better odds at having a good guess at the meaning and the sound of a character that you don't know, which means that you're going to be able to accelerate how fast and how many characters you learn, how many meanings you learn. And as we know in Chinese, um, it's not just a matter of learning individual characters, but piecing them together. So you can really get leverage from knowing the traditional characters and then also knowing the simplified forms of those characters as well. So coming back to my question in the beginning, should you learn traditional or simplified characters? The answer is yes, I would learn both. Learn the traditional form and the simplified form and learn why the strokes had changed that way. Actually, Japanese, if you look at hiragana, katakana, this is another form of simplification of the original traditional or complex character using principles of the cursive writing. Um, I'll do another clip on that. I have one that I did a while back, but I want to do a uh, updated version of how you actually got the hiragana and katakana from these because similar principles were used, but it's always important to know the traditional forms. I hope this has been insightful, interesting, helpful for any learner 
learners of Chinese or anybody interested in China because how you speak Chinese, how you learn Chinese, what type of Chinese, what type of characters you learn. It's not just a tool of communication, but either way you choose, whatever way you choose, it's actually going to be a political statement as well. So think carefully. I hope I've provided you with a balanced um, opinion on how and why I would go about it and you can make up your own decision. Let me know in the comments below. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side.